Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. Today um, we are going to explore finally a feature which has been added in into Logic Pro for iPad version 2, which is the ability to redirect MIDI from one track to another one. So finally, we had to only wait one year for Apple to actually add this one in, but it is finally there. Of course, with some limitation, but it's great that it is there. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So we are inside uh, um, Logic Pro for iPad version 2. Um, it's um, an iPad Pro with an M1 chip. We click on Create Project to uh, kick off uh, the creation of a new project. We select Tracks. And then we want to actually start creating a MIDI track. So we click on the three dots to choose an instrument. And I will explain why I'm not going with the instrument selected for now, which is BA1. I'm going to select the default one, the vintage electric piano, and then I click on create. So we have a MIDI track here with a, a vintage electric piano. which sounds like that. And I'm going to use the um, internal keyboard so you can see it instead of having an external MIDI controller and then having another camera pointed to it. I think that creates sometimes distractions. I prefer to do it like this. Okay, so let's say that we want to uh, create, duplicate this track. So we click here and we duplicate that particular track that was selected. Okay, now, Let's go back to the first track. So we click on it, it is uh, highlighted. And um, let's um, double click, sorry, click here, where and we select cr uh, create a MIDI region. And for simplicity, we just do one bar, we double click on it, and, um, and we can say select show in edit, or we can click down here. Right, okay, let's um, create some notes. Again, it doesn't really matter what the notes are for the purposes of um, uh, the tutorial. And of course, if you don't like that, of course, you can still, you can delete it, go to um, to your library, sorry, here, and then go to um, perhaps uh, some of your loops and take one and click drag and drop as so. So that's... Um, something else you want to do if you want to follow up the tutorial depending on your preferences but it's not really important for what I want to show so we have a, a MIDI um, region here on the first MIDI track so if we click play of course it will play now we just click on it as well click again and then we go to cycle and, and select selection. So we'll repeat these four bars, okay? Let's say that I want to send the MIDI uh, coming from this MIDI region from the first track to the second one. So how do I do that? Well, in the past, we had to use some tricks to, to achieve that, but not anymore. So let's go to the second track and we highlight that. And um, let's go into the properties here. Okay, and now there is a new option which says internal MIDI in. And at the moment it sets to um, to off. So click where it says off, select instrument input, and then select where that is coming from. So in this case, the first one, classical grand sampler. Okay, there it is. Now let's go back and click play. So you can hear that the second track is playing. In this case, I have soloed it. So you can hear only the second track, but of course, you, just for demonstration purposes to show you that uh, it is actually playing the MIDI uh, events which are coming from the first track. Okay, and of course, together. And again, to make it uh, um, more interesting again, we just duplicated the particular track again. And we go into the instrument view and click and hold where it says e-piano. So we have this menu, select, replace, and perhaps we go to BA1 and we load that up. Now let's bring up the keyboard. 
that's what we have at the moment on BA1. But um, of course, you could choose to have uh, something different. So um, let's go to pluck here. Um, why not? Let's try that. So let's close the uh, the different views so we can see all the different tracks again with the third track selected we go to property we go to internal midi in and you can see this is uh, already selected to take midi from the first track because um, i duplicated the, the second track so let's click play now you notice that the second track is not playing so the first track is playing, um, we have a MIDI region for it, but the third track is not playing. Sorry, the third track is playing because it's taking the MIDI in from the first track, but the second track is not playing. If I go to the second track and I select it and click play, what happens now is you have the first track where you have the MIDI region playing, then you have the second track, which is as focus, which is also playing. So practically the track which uh, as focus is, uh, which is playing, okay, even if we have this option, which is activated. Now, if um, I want both second and third track to play alongside the first track, I need to click where it says R for recording on both tracks. So I arm them both for recording. And now you will hear all three playing. So, um, that and that is quite interesting so that's still a bit of a, an additional stamp if you like to have them to play uh, all together but at least we have the option now something else i wanted to show you as well if you go back to the first track okay and we go to the instrument viewer and uh, effect um, view let's remove the sum plus so click and hold and select remove and we can also remove uh, uh, the different effects like the compressor and uh, also the channel EQ. Now let's click play. It doesn't play. And that is quite interesting. So you go to the second track and you can see is receiving. Okay. But um, sorry, you have the option for the internal MIDI in, but it wants an instrument input. And because the first track doesn't have any more an instrument, I removed it, is not taking that MIDI in from the first track. I.e. the second and the third track are not taking the MIDI in from the first track because there is no an instrument, although there is a MIDI region. And, <laughs> and that's quite interesting. So let's select the MIDI region, click on it again, and now remove it. Now we go on the first track and we select the MIDI effect and um, go to search and we search for euclidium from four pockets a really great product that is what it looks like now if we press play of course there is um no um audio coming out because uh, there is no instrument okay although if i go to the second track there is an instrument okay if i press play still doesn't play and both tracks two and three are active still doesn't play okay now you need to go back to the first track and add an instrument okay like this vintage electric piano now if you don't want this track to play fair enough then i suggest you mute it and then of course play I just randomized the F to have a different pattern, okay? So um, you need to remember to have an instrument on the particular track from where you're taking the MIDI in. Um, but that is not too bad. As I said, you can actually mute the particular track. Now, let's go to the second track here we highlighted. Of course, we have internal MIDI, internal MIDI inactive, taking the 
in instrument input from the first track, which is great. But let's say that I want to play a specific track from a Euclidean, of course, then I can change the MIDI channel, right? So I can say this is only for one instead of all, and I can go to the second track, it's the third track as well, and change the MIDI input channel to two. So the second track receives only a MIDI channel number one, and the third track receives only a MIDI channel number three. So I randomized again the pattern inside the Euclidean sequences so you get a better feeling there are different tracks being played. So let's try again. So you can hear different tracks and then you can continue like so, right? And of course you can also uh, play the instrument, right? Right? like so okay i hope you enjoyed the um tutorial and uh, see you next time